Well, so, on to the main topic of the week, TUEs. Michael, what are they? TUEs are therapeutic use exemptions, and they are like a legalized way to dope temporarily. Um, WADA and the UCI use it as a way to bring athletes back up to a level playing field so that they can be healthy. Uh, so you have asthma, you can make sure you have an inhaler that might have a banned substance in it. But you have such a small dose that you can be on a little playing field to all your competitors. So, like, it's honestly just using medicine in the way they were intended, not by the way that cyclists have been using them for years. Exactly. Exactly. Basically, right. yeah. And, uh, guys, why is this uh, our main topic? So, it's an issue now because of a recent data breach of WADA by a Russian hacker by the name of Fancy Bear. Mm-hmm. I'll link to his stuff in the description down below. Um, he hacked into the WADA database and released a lot of um, private medical documents about uh, numerous athletes, including cyclists. A um, couple of them were about uh, Fabian Cancellara's um, TUEs, Chris Frooms, Brad Wiggins, and a couple of other guys. Uh, but those were the three we've kind of focused on, especially Wiggins and Cancellara. So, in, in, in short, they have used their uh, like medical yeah. exemption to use otherwise banned substances. Uh, so they use doping, but for medical reasons. Right. And Isabel, what was the Cancellara one all about? The problem with the leak is it just basically says this rider at this state had a TUE for this uh, drug, right? So everybody right now has spent the past two weeks speculating uh, over things. Immediately as soon as the the Cancellara thing came out, Tarek Segofredo and Cancellara confirmed that he did indeed indeed have these because he was suffering from huge allergic reaction to bee stings. That was all put on the Trek page. The link will be in the show notes. And the pictures are horrifying. And whoever sees these pictures goes like, yep, he should take the drugs because there's no reason why humans... We have these drugs to help us out, then let's help us out. Like, it's not... This wasn't, like, for doping. This is a man who's in the hospital with an oxygen tube who is completely swollen, who needs this, right? Exactly. Um, yeah, Kanchlar received uh, Bee Sting's and was treated with TUEs in 2011 and 2013. Uh, you can see his eyes swollen. Um, it... He just does not look well whatsoever, and I believe most of the psychic community is all on board with Cancellara getting this style TUE. Um, the big news, though, I mean, Cancellara were pretty set on that being okay. The news about really Wiggins and questioning what his three TUEs are. And Brad Wiggins received three TUEs, one before the 11 Tour de France, one right before the 2012 Tour de France, which, of course, he won. And right before the 2013 Giro d'Italia. Uh, those were all his big season goals. And obviously he won the 2012 tour. Um, he did receive injections of corticosteroids. It's the exact same steroid that Lance Armstrong tested positive for in 1999. Obviously at a much smaller dosage. Um, and they're calling to question, did that TUE give Brad Wiggins an unfair advantage heading into those three races? And if he didn't have that, would he be able to have won the tour that he won? So uh, before you guys say anything, I want to like jump the breach for people out there uh, like myself who have chronic illnesses that you don't see on the outside because clearly Conchilara's bee sting, like it looks horrible, like obviously he needs medication. Uh, but there are people who ha- have illnesses that you don't see on the outside who also need medication and to just judge them on that is not something we should do. I'm not saying that is the case right here, but I just want to make that very clear that Mm -hmm. (laughs) there are people who you can't see on the outside that they are uh, ill, who definitely need medication and should definitely get the medical help they need. I am not opposed to TUEs at all. I think that it's, please get them because then people who need the drugs are getting healthy. Like we don't want guys on the bike fainting because cyclists are not the type of cy- of people who like to quit so they're gonna force their bodies so might as well you know get them healthy 
that's not my problem with this story. Yeah, we hear you, Pinochet. We, we don't think it's legalized cheating unless somebody's abusing it. And, of course, we want some people to investigate if it is legalized cheating. And in that case, we can shut it down. But as far as we're concerned, most of this stuff is, if not all of it, is complete fair game um, and therefore the therapeutic use. Um, there's a documentary called A Year in Yellow in which the Team Sky documents Brad Wiggins' journey uh, winning Perry Nice, uh, winning Tour de Romandie, uh, winning Crunch and Dauphiné, and then of course winning the Tour de France that year, as well as the Olympic time trial. Um, in, in that he does talk about the fact that he has had asthma since he was a young child, and that he tends to struggle with it uh, when he's pushing his body in training, especially in the spring and early summer, uh, which is actually right when the Giro and Tour are. So he claims that the inflammation of his asthma and allergies caused that he needed some TUE to relieve that um, inflammation, which is what that drug would do. And he took it out of competition before the tour started. He didn't take it like second rest day right before the big mountain stages. He took it well beforehand. And as far as anyone is concerned medically, there is no evidence that he cheated and of course, still being investigated whether it was used anytime else. But those three are his official TUEs from WADA, from the UCI, from UCAD, and from UK Cycling. And there is no current evidence to say that he was using it for cheating, especially when you look at the dosage levels being far less than one needed to abuse it with. Well, okay, so here are my problems with this whole story. And it's the fact that there's something not quite right with it. Starting with the silence that the whole Team Sky have carried for the past, since the news broke about a week and a half ago to two weeks, depending on when you hear this podcast. Mm -hmm. Uh, Today, I think, I believe yesterday, Wiggins came out to talk about it. And then today... Right, yesterday it would be on Sunday. And then today, uh, David Brailsford finally spoke out. And of his interview, there are three things I want to bring out. One is that at no point in time, and this is a quote from him. No, at that point in time, no, I wouldn't say I did. For me, the abuse of our sport was more around the more renowned blame, bl- banned blood booster EPO blood transfusion. This is in response to whether or not he knew that the drug was had a dodgy reputation. And then when asked about the Armstrong case in 1999, he goes, well, I think everyone was aware of that, but that was more about whether it should have been a retrospective TUE rather than the product itself. So either he knew that the substance had a dodgy, dodgy past or he didn't. But in that whole paragraph, it kind of goes back and forth. Then there is the whole f- fact that he insists that L- Landers, who is, um, he used to work with Rasmussen from Rabobank. We all know who he is. He worked for Team Sky. And so he insisted that he had no involvement whatsoever, but we have no way of knowing that. Then, and this is the problem that that what really bothers me is that he admitted that Wiggins may have been treated with this drug to prevent him from becoming ill at the tour more than to treat his active symptoms. Which means that he took this drug not actually for any symptoms he was feeling. A drug that is much heavier than other drugs that can be used for asthma to protect someone and like and this is my problem with this whole story it just things in it don't add up michael you brought up in the conversation earlier today the fact that wiggins has sworn up and down that he has never injected anything to himself and here we're finding out that he has and like it's such a minute thing but at the same it just adds more like I wish they were more transparent, is I guess what I'm saying. Or at least consistent with their story. 
Now, here's what I'll say to this. Um, TUEs are not required to be um, made public. Uh, they do have to go through a chain of command. If an athlete requests it through the team doctor, it must go to that country's WNC. In the case with Wiggins, that would be Team Sky's doctor going to UCAD. UCAD talking to UK Cycling, UK Cycling and UCAD talking to WADA and WADA and UCAD and UK Cycling talking to the UCI. All of them had to agree that this is something that this athlete can have through a doctor's team review panel, and they said yes to it. So it's not like you're just getting a prescription for cheating. And right, it's, and uh, it's also, to be clear, like it's an independent panel of medical professionals who will judge whether or not you require or you can use this this uh, medicine, really. Yeah, but this is all coming from recommendations of a a team doctor. They don't actually see the athlete or talk to the athlete to uh, confirm whatever the team doctor has said in their report. No, no, of course, it would be kind of impossible, I think, for that panel to, to follow every racer so, out there. So, you know, things can be done to make things go through. Because oh no, I, I, corruption is always possible in that sense. I just wanted to make sh make like make the point clear that you can't just go out to the Mexican pharmacy and get your TUE. Yeah, no. uh, from uh, from anyone. Like it is something you actually like. There is a, a straight like a clear process for getting one of those, and it's not like going to the pharmacy around the corner. Yeah, to get it. But but I agree. Like the weird thing about this whole story is, for me at least, is why did he inject it? while saying that uh, he had never had any injections. That, that's just, that's, that smells fishy. All right, here's what I'll say to that then. Uh, growing up, he used uh, inhalers as a child, and he used inhalers for the majority of his cycling career. Uh, three times he used needles, and of course, you would recognize three times you had used needles, obviously. Um, I don't know why he would assert that he is 100% needle-free, even though there are three documented times he used needles. Um, but I'd say 99.9% .9 of all of Brad Wiggins' uses of, it, of anything to deal with uh, anti-inflammatory due to his asthma or allergies were done via inhalers. And to this day, he still uses inhalers. Um, so I can see why he would assert that, even though those three instances I would you know, earmark and say, except these three T we instances. Which are the more um, problematic ones, because... The idea is that his asthma has gotten so bad that his regular in, in, in inhalers are not doing the job and therefore he needs the very big injection. But here, his boss is contradicting that fact because he's saying that he didn't even have the symptoms, they were just trying to prevent them. And the prevention part is the part that it could be considered a doping factor because sickness as we've seen in tours are a big deal like one of the bigger things as we always say is that you have to stay on the bike and that means not getting sick so it is a way of kind of playing the system in the sense that like technically it's not doping but it is making doing something in order that is not quite right because it's a very strong drug before someone needs it. Well, here's what I would say. Um, obviously, 2012 was an amazing year for Brad Wiggins, you know, winning Paris-Nice and winning um, Dauphiné uh, as well. But he said when he was in Romandie, uh, he wasn't feeling very well. Um, and then he got it for a tour to make sure. In my mind, it's kind of like getting a flu shot. It's Obviously, you don't have the flu before you get the flu shot, but you get it so you're ready when it does happen. But a flu shot is completely different than this drug. From what I've been reading about this drug, it's a very, very strong drug. Plus, cortisols are not that good for your body if taken excessively and unnecessarily because it may prevents your body from creating their, their own cortisone. Right, and this corticosteroid is... is at such a small dosage compared to what abusers and dopers... But here's the have. thing. You don't know that because that's the dosage he was approved for. That might not have been the dosage he got. Right. If the doctor did circumvent the prescription, that is something to look into. Like, the TUE is basically a little, a little card that says, if you test me and this comes up, this is why I got this. 
But as I understand it, the test can't tell you, oh, there's like more than what the TUE told you that you were supposed to have. It just detects it. So we don't actually know how much he got. And I'm not saying he did. It's just there's a lot of problems with this story. And there's a lot of problems with just allowing writers to take very strong drugs that in the future can prevent them from even healing from their body even healing themselves just because they might get sick because there's nothing preventing sky from applying for a tue once he did get sick in the race you can apply for a tue in the middle of a race that is legal so I just want to I just want to add to this whole thing that uh, cortisones or cortisone steroids um, they've been banned forever, but the UCI has uh, made an effort to make it more accessible in 2011, and when it was clear in 2013 that half, if not all, of the peloton was using them for every little minor injury, uh, they put a, a hole in that one trying to make it harder again to get actually the TUEs. But all these offenses that uh, we're talking about right now by Bradley Wiggins was in a time that the UC- UCI openly uh, allowed use of cortisones for you know medical reasons still, of course, with a TUE. But it was definitely much easier to get the cortisone injection uh, in, in like 2011, 12, 13 than it is nowadays. So this was in, like on the height of the cortisone injection period as well. So it, fe- it almost feels like we're like berating uh, Wiggins right now for an offense that like we know that Philip Schilbert was using it every other week for his minor aches and pains everywhere. Like th- there, there were more writers in that era, at least, who were using the cortisones. I'm not even angry at Wiggins. I'm angry at Sky. Like this is a problem. Like my problem is with the high and mighty attitude that Sky projects. And this is why Sky is largely not liked by very large amount of fans is because they project a high and mighty image of like oh no we are all overboard uh we're completely transparent ask us any question but as soon as questions are asked and things start getting murky it gets very murky and they don't quite answer properly and this seems very very sketchy if you're an organization that of the prestige that Sky is, when this, and the minute a reporter comes knocking saying, "Hey, did Brad Wiggins, you know, dope during his Tour de France?" You don't, of course, you say no. Uh, but I would want to make sure that I have all my facts straight before I comment on an allegation that large. And then once Team Sky got their stuff together. Brad Wiggins went on TV to explain himself. As soon as that happened, the very next day, David Ruffers uh, went and said his piece that we've already talked about. But the explanation is not good. Yeah, but it was really only... And it was also only after uh, some cyclists themselves, uh, like Tom Dumoulin, for instance, uh, it was like, well, this smells fishy, like, right before those, right? Like, that's weird. So it's like, it, it almost feels like they came out with that reaction after the big event had already happened, trying to salvage what was ever was salvageable. And this is very similar to the Lisey Armistead issue. It is very similar to that one. And it's, and it's, and it's come, has come out in a very similar manner. And the statements from the organizations involved and in charge of have been very, they haven't satisfied, basically. And as you said, sure, take your time, think of what you're going to say, look it up. But when you come with an answer, at least answer something that is cohesive. David Brailsford's answer is not cohesive at all and clearly contradicts what Wiggins said the night before in spots and contradicts himself in spots. Like, sure, he's human, but... How can you trust that? I don't know. No, I agree. But like, the person I want to hear from is Brad Wiggins, since he was the athlete, and he was there for all of this, obviously. And I'd like to hear from the team doctor uh, to assure us that he used the correct amount of dosage that was prescribed 
to him by the medical review board. And if that's the, if all those line up, I we're just pushing a mute point at that point. And no matter what Davis Brelfords may say or claim or misspoke or whatever he, they claim he did, I, I I have a hard time seeing that Brad Wiggins cheated on this. Especially that like, you'd have to find a pattern of cheating with him uh, to have that result. I don't think he ha- I don't think he has that thing. And like you said before, we don't mean to bash Brad Wiggins. We respect Brad Wiggins for what he's done and all these wins of cycling. Um, he just happens to be the focal point of the conversation uh, of TUEs. And there are definitely ways we can improve TUEs, such as having more transparency. Well, so on that on that subject matter, like one, it's it, like it's deplorable what happened, of course, with this very very private data being uh, made publicized so because of course a reason why this they don't have to be public is that it's a medical uh, it's medical data and medical data is very sensitive i i wouldn't want my medical uh files out in the open uh for anyone to see even though there is probably nothing very bad on it but uh you know i don't want uh, medical insurers to find out my information i don't want i, I just don't want anyone to, to know my medical history and in this case it was you know something as simple as asthma related uh injuries or obese sting related injuries uh but yeah if, if it was something more private or you know life-threatening or whatever you don't want that out in the open and making this kind of data public um yeah that, that's the reason why you don't want it and that's why i think it's pretty deplorable what this russian hacker guy fuzzy bear what was his name fancy bear fancy bear did um, yeah. to put this data uh, out in the open. Clearly, this was a response to the whole uh, Olympics uh, situation in Sochi that we've talked about before uh, with all the Russians being banned from the Olympics in, Ro- uh, in uh, Rio as well. But, I mean, it's just, this is, it's uh, it's this private data. You, you, sh- you should treat it with more respect than has been going on as well. Yet, we're talking about it, so. Yeah, and, like, obviously, Brad Wiggins is a grown man in his mid-30s. He can kind of take this stuff but these other data leaks weren't just cycling related simone biles who is a teenager here in america she's a gymnast who won gold um this year in rio she got data leaks for the exact same way and her tues were elite as well um hers for her adhd problems um she got accused of doping in the olympics this year even though there was a valid reason for having the medication she has Right, and that that is something more sensitive and more private, I'd say, than a bee sting, which you know we can see on the outside probably. But that is definitely something private. You don't necessarily want the entire world to know because you know it's just it's it's not not for you to care about any of that. And you know that's why that's what that, that's upsetting me a bit here. Right, and yeah, I mean it, it'd be nice if we had a system in place in which we could say athlete. A from Team Sky received a TUE. We don't need the reason why. We just know that he received one. So we can say, okay, that happened. We can look at this and try to establish a pattern of if he was cheating or not. Like we said, we don't think anyone was necessarily cheating uh, until proven that they are, they didn't cheat. Um, so I hope we've explained to our listeners what's been happening with TUEs and what TUEs are. Yeah. Yep. Yep.